laughter is the best vaccine. <laughs> We're saving lives here. First couple of shows felt amazing, like crack cocaine hit the veins for the first time. And I fell back in love with stand-up in a bigger way than I had ever been in love with it before. The first time back at live comedy, I got full tingles all over my body. My first gig, it felt so weird to hear live laughter. It was the most bizarre and wonderful thing. What up, Everett? Woo! We're in Everett, Washington at Tony V's Garage. We have done Comedy Garage here for the last several years. Uh, do you guys have a bad reaction to the vaccine like me? Like, as soon as I got my vaccine, I had this really overwhelming sense of, like, holier than thou. Like, just real, real fucking pretentious about the whole thing. Like, yes, I will never die. We are the first open mic in the area that started up again. I used to run the open mic here with Kate Carlson Carlson. And um, now it's run by Adam and Quinn. And We've gotten in a lot of fights already, yeah, but, yeah. like, it's been interesting <laughs> oh i would say net positive though i i've had fun with the shows and we've had some good turnouts like you know you're not sleeping enough when the first thought that you have when you wake up in the morning is holy shit i'm driving right now <laughs> who the fuck owns this fucking shit <laughs> During the pandemic, I did what a lot of people do, was started making content. My web series, and now this is my pride and joy, it's called Comedians at Skate Parks. And I basically just tried to do Jerry Seinfeld's show, but with me and skate parks instead of cars. My first episode was with Mark Norman, second episode with Courtney McGinnis. Yes! Comedy during lockdown wasn't a lot. I did a few Zoom shows, and Zoom shows were, were rough. That was a diabolical creation. I think I did two Instagram shows and it was terrible. Comics did a lot of not having pants jokes in which then the punchline was we all got to see their ass. And so I've seen a lot of male asses on video without, you know, Googling it myself. I did a few corporate shows, but it was strange. It's like you're speaking into some weird void. So, and I had kids at home, okay? That's the real deal. I had four kids at home. Because really, I'd have my own show on TLC if I was pumping kids out every four months, right? Extreme uteruses. <laughs> Stuck at home, I watched a bunch of comedy. I saw Danny Jollas do a brilliant Zoom set where his pre-recorded self and his live self had a fight. And that got me thinking about ways to make the most of the Zoom platform. So I created a cartoon character of myself and I did my set live in real time as a cartoon. Can't do that in person. Well, I used to work with children, but I got fired for swearing in front of them. <laughs> um, look, I was not swearing. I was not swearing, okay? I was choosing a secure password. It just looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> because of Zoom, I was able to do some shows uh, to like uh, globally. So some of the in like a, uh, in, in British uh, audience or German audience, like uh, I did some in Europe. As a person that struggles with disability and a lot of things that actually impact my energy, um, it was a really good experience for me because it's much easier for me to just show up at my desk in my house than to have to get in the car and come somewhere and devote, you know, all those extra hours that go into doing it that aren't there when you're just doing it on Zoom. So it feels really good. It just really reminds you of the energy you can have with the live comedy. You hear people laugh. <laughs> Like once you're back at open mics, it feels like nothing has changed. During lockdown, I was, I was missing a huge part of me, like the, the way that I express myself, the way that I process through my experiences, uh, that was all kind of gone. And so when I stepped back on stage, uh, I felt like uh, one of the more familiar parts of my identity uh, returned. There's no way Jesus is one man. One man can't hold every single thing together, especially one man who has holes in his hands.
<laughs> it was rough getting back out. Um, comedy, like people don't realize, is like just a skill, like anything else, kind of you know, like a physical skill, being on stage and talking and thinking like it. And uh, it was scary at first because things were rough. But yeah, you just start going back and it started feeling more natural and it slowly progressed. And uh, it feels good. We're back out, writing new jokes. Now, like, you gotta do self checkout, and there's a guy that watches you do his job. <laughs> this is the weirdest cuck holding of employment ever. It's a bit of a shock to the system to be doing anything live, but comedy is different for me than it was before. I missed uh, community, I missed uh, hanging out with other comedians. Uh, just being able to shoot the shit, and just make jokes, just riff. I love you so much, and uh, if you feel the same, it'd be nice to hear it back. I know. Yeah. Uh, I love you too, Adam. Yeah. Uh, He's big on physical touch. You look like a Nazi. <laughs> Uh, I remember we went for our Black Lives Matter marches and I ran into some people. I was like, yeah, hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, so it's been, it's been nice to reunite. When we stopped and started back again, it was pretty like socially and politically intense and, and where audiences were at with stuff, there was a big learning curve. Now some of you got uncomfortable in here when I made that joke. When you make your position into a joke, it kind of helps people be able to be like, oh, that's interesting, as opposed to, oh, you're just trying to judge me and shame me. It's jokes. <laughs> Don't take it seriously. I'll still take your tips. <laughs> I think the, the further you go north of Seattle, the less uh, PC it gets, if that makes sense. Uh, I feel like you're free to talk about more stuff than you are when you're in Seattle. I got my show in Snohomish. It's going awesome too. Collector's Choice. It's downtown Snohomish, the town. The land of farms, outdoor paintball, and skydiving. Yeah. I'm just thrilled that Snohomish comedy shows are getting filled. My show, this show, and my other friends who are running some shows. I used to teach high school full time, but I quit teaching full time to do stand up comedy full time because I want to try out both of the lowest paying jobs in America. <laughs> If you're in, in Snohomish County or North, you just don't really have many options for live professional stand-up comedy, so uh, I try to do as much of that in my hometown of Everett or the surrounding 10, 15 miles as I can. Like this show I produce and run at Malty Pete's Impossible. Hi, don't get COVID because I don't fucking go anywhere. That's what's happening. <laughs> You know, it's just been awesome having comedy back and seeing all the people laugh and go crazy. It's been great. Having people inside laughing and um, sharing space again, um, you know, I, I treasure it much more than I did before. I think everyone just wants to laugh. There's this like tension in the air because of all like, the lockdowns and the mandates and everything. And I, I think people just want to escape from that. Just like they want a sense of normalcy. And there is something to be said about just making people laugh. That when you can escape for a moment and get away from it and just laugh about something, that's pretty valuable too. Crowds have been fantastic and absorbing it so much. So I think we're bringing some joy. I'm really happy that Everett and Seattle and Tacoma and every, there's, it's starting to cr crawl its way back to what it was, hopefully better. So continue to come out and support live comedy because we desperately need it. I also don't think that Deborah should air any of this interview. <laughs> Do we still have the same haircut? Yeah. Yeah, look at us. <laughs> gotta love open mics. <laughs> Woo, you gotta earn it here, huh? Uh, I found it funny, and I don't know about you guys. That one's gonna need to get tightened up. All right, this is new. I'm still trying, I clearly have to work on making you guys outraged by this too. Look, we got a bunch of great comics coming up tonight. Some that aren't. Deb, she was great in Squid Game. All right, I'll move on. No one's into that one. <laughs> That's it for me. Thanks, I'm Deb Tahara.